Hello guys, in this video we'll be taking a look at uh, the autosomal DNA uh, as well as the predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of two um, Chalcolithic or Copper Age Swedes from Sweden uh, from the pitted ware culture who were the last hunter-gatherers of Sweden. Let's begin with the HEM004 sample which I named James for convenience's sake. Uh, James has got blue eyes, snub-shaped nose and blonde hair according to Minasha Code 2. Uh, with Snipper Free he is also predicted to have blonde hair, white skin and blue eyes. Kind of similar prediction. Uh, YSEC is depicting him with brown hair but I don't, I don't really think uh, he had brown hair. It's pretty unlikely that he would have any kind of hair color other than blonde. Um, just based on his genotype in like BH1, BH2 and BH3. He's got BH1 and BH2 and BH3. He's got all of the major blue eye haplotypes that are responsible for blue eyes in Northern Europeans. Uh, he does not have BH4, but that doesn't really matter all that much. That's a separate mutation uh, that's most frequent in Mediterranean. By the way, if you have BH2, you can't really have BH4. So the BH2 and BH4 are mutually exclusive. Um, he's got uh, he's got two derived European hunter-gatherer variants in uh, IRF, in IRF force variation that has to do with like blue eyes, ginger hair and pale skin. Um, I've mentioned this variation previously and I noticed a pattern where uh, most European hunter-gatherers have either one or two derived variants here. Uh, whereas nowadays in Europeans this is pretty rare. Uh, so this is one of the depigmentation uh, alleles that was present in European hunter-gatherers but isn't really present all that much in modern Europeans. He is predicted to have Estonian eye shape and he is also predicted to have wavy hair with my hair ID tool. Um, now he's got some genotypes for darker skin tone in particular in the Asib gene um, but he also has some genotypes for white European skin tone uh, such as as you can see on the screen his genotypes in Keto G and SLC24A5. Now we're moving on to the second individual who this video is about and uh, she is HEM005 and I named her Stacy. Uh, the file is a little bit higher um, higher quality so the prediction for phenotype is a lot higher quality here. Uh, you can see for eye shape she's predicted to have Estonian eye shape and straight hair with my hair ID tool and this genotype quality it matters a lot for hair ID and the eye shape predictor uh, because if you don't have many variations showing up in your file if there is if there isn't many variations that my tool looks for that are in your file then you're gonna have a bad prediction so it's very important to to look for files uh, that have high uh, high coverage there was another file that I wanted to make this video on and include in this video but it was a really low quality file so I'm just not going to uh, I'm not going to show it here but it will be on my Google Drive and you will be able to download it as well um, but okay let's move on to phenotype Stacy has got blue eyes Greek shaped nose, very interesting. You, you can see I depicted her in the image with a more Greek shaped nose, kind of a long aquiline Roman kind of nose shape. And blonde hair, just like the previous individual, just like James. Uh, with Snipper Free, she's predicted to have blue eyes, blonde hair and white skin. And she's got blue eye haplotype 1, BH1, and BH2, and BH3 once again, and once again no BH4, the same genotype in Oka2, Herc2 as James. Uh, however, she's a little bit different because she has some darker non-European uh, or at least non-Nordic alleles in SLC24A5 and SLC35A2 and actually Keto gene as well. So she might have been a little bit darker than James in comparison to him. Uh, she only she, she also only has one European hunter-gatherer blue eye and red hair and pale skin variant in IRF4. So once again uh, we're getting the clue that she's a little bit darker in color than James. And um, she mostly has the RAV genotypes in SLC24A4, which is typical for European hunter-gatherers. But what's not typical for European hunter-gatherers is that she has mostly ancestral alleles in TIRP1 region. TIRP1 is a gene that's implicated in, among other things, eye color and hair color. But it's also kind of implicated in skin color. And it's actually one of the genes that's uh, not only important for human coloring, but also like for animals or um, like mouse, mice or like wolves it's it's pretty it's a pretty universal gene that codes for hair and eye coloring in every species that exists uh, so it's interesting that she has mostly mostly ancestral alleles in tier 1 uh, most european hunter gatherers tend to have derived uh, variants in tier 1 now although i did introduce james and stacy as the last european hunter gatherers 
Um, in terms of ancestry, they're actually not entirely hunter-gatherer. You can see they can be modeled as a mixture of uh, Western hunter-gatherer, which is Villa Bruna, plus um, Eastern, I mean, plus uh, Ancient North Eurasian, or Eastern hunter-gatherer. You can model them as a mixture of VHG plus EHG plus Anatolian hunter-gatherer, or VHG plus A&E plus Anatolian hunter-gatherer. Both models work. Uh, however, with Eastern hunter-gatherer from Karelia, it's maybe a little bit of a, a little bit better model. But what's interesting uh, is I just noticed this right now. When you include Karelia in the model, the amount of Anatolian hunter-gatherer actually goes down. You know what that means? That's pretty much um, well. It, it's there is there is no need to prove it because it's a known fact. But it's um, testament to the southern affinities that exist in Karelian hunter-gatherers. It's a testament to the um, southern or Mediterranean admixture in Eastern hunter-gatherers in general. Because um, when you include Karelian hunter-gatherers, suddenly, for James, for example, the amount of Pinarbasi goes down by 1%, and for Stacy, the amount of Pinarbasi goes down by, what is it, like, also around 1%, so it's, um, it's pretty significant decrease when you add Karelian hunter-gatherer instead of a font of a Garatri. That means Karelian hunter-gatherers have southern affinity affinities that neither a font of a Garatri nor Villa Bruna have. So Karelian hunter-gatherer has a little bit of a affinity towards Anatolian hunter-gatherers and basically everything southern and mediterranean very interesting stuff but what's also interesting is that these individuals both james and stacy have around one quarter uh, southern or anatolian hunter-gatherer admixture that was not present in the earlier mesolithic hunter-gatherers of sweden uh, and we're gonna see this with the ged match results as well and here is the results with Eurogenes K13 and you're gonna see this pattern repeating over and over again with the different calculators that I'm gonna show in this video. Stacy is consistently more Mediterranean and more Anatolian farmer shifted relative to James. James is kind of more Eastern hunter-gatherer, maybe a little bit more um, European hunter-gatherer in general, maybe a little bit more affinity towards uh, even Indo-Europeans, whereas Stacy uh, is very Anatolian farmer shifted. And you can see Stacy is actually scoring 8.5% West Mediterranean with Eurogenes K13, uh, which is not even all that little. Like, I'm, I'm a modern human, for example. I have uh, a lot of, you know, you know a lot of Anatolian f farmer admixture, but I'm scoring, uh, I think, 9% West Mediterranean, or 8 point something, 8 point maybe 9 or 8.89 or something like that. So I'm scoring about as much West Mediterranean as Stacy, and I'm a modern European. This is what James and Stacy score with Pun DNL K12, and you can see James is scoring more Caucasus admixture than Stacy. You can see James is scoring actually two percent more Caucasus than Stacy, uh, but James is also scoring more European hunter-gatherer admixture than Stacy, and Stacy, on the other hand, is scoring four, actually even a little bit more than four percent more Anatolian Neolithic farmer than James. Stacy is very much shifted towards Anatolian Neolithic farmers. Uh, now, these results don't really look like what's typical for uh, Europeans today. Why? Uh, because of the lack of Caucasus hunter-gatherer. Uh, Europeans today have a lot more Caucasus hunter-gatherer. For example, it's typical for like Russians or Belarusians to score 20, around 20% 20 Caucasus HG with Pan DNA LK12. I score a little bit more than 20, but it's typical for Russians and Belarusians to score around 20% Caucasus HG. For uh, Western Europeans, I think that number is a little bit lower. For like uh, Basques, Basques have the least, but they still score like 5% Caucasus HG. So um, James and Stacy scoring less than 3% Caucasus Hunter Gatherer admixture um, is really atypical for Europeans. This is what James and Stacy score with MDLP K11 Modern. Uh, you can see once again the same pattern where James is a lot less Neolithic than Stacy. Stacy is more Neolithic farmer, more. Uh, she's even more Caucasus here. Look at that. James is scoring 11.56% EHG, which is really meant to represent Caucasus drift, whereas Stacy is scoring 11.79% EHG. So Stacy is even more Caucasus. Not only is she more um, Neolithic farmer, she's also more Caucasus than James. So this is why you've seen in the pre in the previous slides with the uh, G25, uh, she has got like 5 or 6% more Pinarbasi admixture than James. It's pretty significant. Now we are going to discuss their traits, their monogenic traits. Let's use my genome analyzer tool for this little analysis. And let's begin with James. All right. So James has got a Valval genotype or Warrior genotype in Compt. Uh, which means 
quicker breakdown of dopamine and less dopamine in the system. Individuals with this genotype have advantages in stress resilience, but disadvantages in attention tasks. This is James, right? Yeah, this is James. All right, he's got GG here, which typically results in higher risk of schizophrenia and bipolar. TT here, which leads to lower activity of the MAOA enzyme. So this is the opposite of uh, this. So GG here means warrior, whereas TT here means warrior. So it's two different genes that both have to do with dopamine reuptake. Uh, MAOA and COMT are different enzymes, but they, they're both enzymes that break down dopamine. However, this is completely different gene from this. Uh, for example, COMT, this one is on the 22nd chromosome pair. MAOA is actually on the X chromosome. So this completely two different genes. Uh, CC in this variation of DRD2, which is the typical genotype for most humans, leading to slightly higher number of dopamine D2 receptors and better memory performance. Okay. Uh, AA in this DRD3 variation, which is mostly a Eurasian genotype, and it increases the risk of autism and autistic personality traits. Uh, CC in this variation of DRD4, which is typical human genotype and leads to decreased risk of schizophrenia. Uh, TT in this variation of DRD4, which is a typical human genotype and is associated with lower odds of intellectual disability. Okay, for lactose persistence, does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation, right? So, um, maybe not so surprising, but uh, you will see that you will see that uh, European lactose persistence mutation is pretty common in Europeans today. But it's not really anywhere to be found with ancient samples from Europe, which is kind of interesting. Uh, he's got AG in this variation of OXTR, which means one sociopath variant and two variants for lower empathy at this variation. And this one is not genotyped. Okay. For diabetes, he's got AA here, which leads to slightly higher risk of type 1 diabetes. CC here, which leads to sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes. So definitely doesn't have type 1 diabetes. And CC here, which is associated with lower risk of type 2 diabetes. Okay, for hemochromatosis, he's got GG here, which means the individual is not a carrier for the hemochromatosis mutation. And for Alzheimer's, TT here, which is typical genotype for most humans, lower risk of Alzheimer's. Oh no, slightly increased risk of... So he doesn't have the protective, protective allele. He doesn't have the allele that protects against Alzheimer's. All right, and for myopia, let's scroll down to the end. He's got TT here, which means increased risk of myopia. All right. So that's James. Now let's get on to Stacy. That's going to be Stacy. Stacy is heterozygous for Valmet, which means intermediate speed of, of dopamine reuptake and intermediate dopamine levels. She's got GG here, which is the typical genotype for most humans and leads to slightly lower risk of schizophrenia. Uh, she's got AA here, which leads to a decreased risk of schizophrenia and bipolar. She's got TT here, which is once again um, same as James, which leads to lower activity of the MAOA enzyme and slower breakdown of dopamine, thus higher dopamine levels and certain advantages in attention tasks. This is the warrior gene that is in MAOA. There is the warrior in COMT, which would be AA here. And then there is the warrior in MAOA, which would be TT here, which she does have. Uh, she's got two derived no goal variants in drd 2 Pro 19 Pro, a very stereotypically European genotype to have, which causes a significant reduction in, in the number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain, a reduction in the risk of schizophrenia, and an increased likelihood of no goal learning, which is the ability to withhold a response when it's not warranted. Whew, okay, um, she's got GG in this variation of drd 2 which is the typical genotype for most humans, and leads to slightly lower risk of schizophrenia and nicotine dependence. GG in TAC1, which means... Uh, A2A2, which, which is typical genotype for most humans. Once again, uh, normal amount of D2 dopamine receptors, whereas somebody with A1A1 genotype here or with A1A2 genotype here would have less dopamine D2 receptors and various risks for Parkinson's, alcoholism, ADHD, and other uh, traits that have to do with an, uh, a lack of dopamine D2 receptors. Okay, uh, She's got CC in this variation of DRD2, which is the typical genotype for most humans, leading to a higher, slightly higher number of dopamine D2 receptor sites and better memory performance. CC in this variation of DRD1, which is the typical genotype for most humans and leads to a slightly lower risk of various mental health conditions. Uh, AA genotype in this variation of DRD1, which leads to a slightly higher likelihood of autism. Let's just skip through all of the non-important stuff because uh, Bundycom has a limit for 10 minutes. Uh, C TC here, which is implicated in slightly higher risk of OCD and intellectual disability. Um, okay, AA in this variation of DRD4, which is implicated in a higher likelihood of schizophrenia. Uh, TT here, which is a genotype associated with lower odds, okay, lower odds of intellectual disability in ADHD, so she doesn't have the 
uh, the minor allele that increases the odds of intellectual disability here. Pretty cool. For lactose persistence, what about that? Uh, GG in MCM6 is this variation, which means the individual does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. Once again here, also does not have any variance for European lactose persistence. So it seems that um, neither of these two pitted duer culture individuals have European lactose persistence mutations. And I don't think... I don't think any of the other ones will. I mean, I'm going to make videos on the other two, but uh, I don't think any of the pitted wear samples are going to have the European lactose persistence mutation. That would be very surprising if they did. Uh, GG here, which means the individual has two variants for higher levels of empathy. Okay. Uh, no sociopath gene, CC here, which means higher levels of empathy once again, not, not the sociopath at all. And GG here, which means the, the individual has two variants for lower levels of empathy. Okay. Uh, that doesn't really matter all that much because these two are sort of the main ones that matter the most for diabetes she's got gg here which leads to a lower risk of various autoimmune disorders and type 1 diabetes oh she's got aa here which leads to a significant increase in the risk of type 1 diabetes so you see uh, the previous individual when i was making when i was analyzing james he's got the opposite of the genotype here which means sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes so for her having aa here means sevenfold increase in the risk of type 1 diabetes and this is kind of uh, important this is the most important variation for type 1 diabetes actually so uh, her having a, a genotype here means it's pretty possible that she had type 1 diabetes I'm just gonna say it right now uh, it's pretty it's pretty possible that she had type 1 diabetes with this kind of genotype here for hemochromatosis doesn't have not a carrier Oh, okay, that's that's interesting. She's got this genotype here, which means this individual has two copies of the H63D variant and likely suffers from hemochromatosis. That's very interesting. That's very interesting because I have the same genotype here. I don't have hemochromatosis. Maybe I'll develop it when I'm like older, when I'm like 60 or something. But it's interesting that uh, she's carrying this uh, this variation, which means the individual has two copies. And this is the exact same variation that I have as well. Uh, pretty interesting stuff. So did she have hemochromatosis and type 1 diabetes? I don't know. It's possible. She could have. I mean, it's uh, it's really possible that she could have had maybe one or the other, or maybe both, actually. Uh, for Alzheimer's, CC here, which means no APOE2 alleles. Uh, two risk alleles for Alzheimer's in this AP APOE. 12 to 61 times higher odds of Alzheimer's than average. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, so not only did she have hemochromatosis and type 1 diabetes it's also possible that she had alzheimer's that's crazy wow all right okay um tt here which is the typical genotype for most humans and leads to average risk of alzheimer's uh, gg here which means individual lower risk of alzheimer's tt here which slightly decreased risk of this doesn't matter all that much uh the variation here that matters a lot are are these two these two matter a lot and her having cc here which means 12 to 61 times higher odds of alzheimer's it's very significant it's a very big deal uh for myopia she's got aa here which means to, um slightly increased risk of myopia aa here which means uh decrease in the risk of myopia and at here which means decreased risk of myopia once again okay interesting so uh now thanks for watching my video you can download both of the files that i've been using in this video you can also check out my tool from my website uh, the website is in the link which is in my youtube not in the description of this video but like if you click on my youtube channel and you read about me page you're gonna see the link to my website well uh, thanks for watching until the end once again you can download the files from link which is in the description and uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content goodbye